Welcome everyone to the start of a new series on Rule the Waves. This series we will be playing as Great Britain, or probably better known, I think it's better said, the United Kingdom. It's kind of a confusing mess, right? You ask people, what is it? England, Great Britain, United Kingdom. As far as I can tell, it's probably the United Kingdom. People can correct me in the comments if they'd like, but my understanding is Great Britain is the island, Britain is the island. England is the part south of Scotland, it's a nation. And the United Kingdom was, um, especially back at this time, the alliance between all the colonies and England as well. So that's just my naive understanding of it. I'm sure people living in, well, on Great Britain <laughs> have a better understanding of it. But um, So we'll be playing as the United Kingdom because basically we'll be playing as the Royal Navy. This is a really exciting country to play as from a historical standpoint because Great Britain obviously was the the real leader of the seas at this time and continued to be so for for many years even after World War One I. Um, I think the transition of power probably takes place somewhere around World War One where uh, the United States really starts entering into its own so I don't know when you would say that one eclipsed the other but somewhere between uh, the start of or the end of World War One and the end of World War II. Certainly by the end of World War II, the United States Navy was um, the superior fleet in the world. Anyway, a lot of history just blown by. Who cares about that, right? Let's get to the game. I'm playing Great Britain because it won the straw poll. Very close battle with Italy, which will be, I think, my next series. And I plan to do that one actually as another um, succession series. I think I'm going to be doing it with uh, Stoic Frog Gaming, Dr. Zaius. And we'll see who else gets involved with that one. That one's that series is going to be after this one, but something to look forward to if you're interested in another Succession series. Um, so, uh, let's see. What should we say about the United Kingdom as we're starting off? The Royal Navy at this time. Well, no matter what budget we choose, we have the biggest budget in the game. Um, this is going to be offset by the fact that we also have the most colonies. I think we have to have ships in almost every sea province except for maybe... Three. Uh, I think there's 11 total, so <laughs> that is quite a lot. Uh, other stuff, we will be a technolog technology leader, which is very good. Um, they do have hidden flaws. There's, I think, I can't remember exactly. I'm, I'm sure, again, someone will correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think there's two effects of this. One, I think that the flash fires, which will be very prevalent on British ships, unfortunately on ours, <laughs> uh, will be, I think that's part of the hidden flaws thing, although that's mainly just a, a discipline thing, loading, not having magazines in the corridor when you're loading them and all that, but the other thing is I think this also allows for ships to be over tonnage easier, or I don't know, I honestly don't remember anymore. So in, basically, but in terms of a lot of, in a lot of ways, Great Britain is the preeminent naval force and you take over, and you might think that that leads to an easy game, and you wouldn't be totally wrong. So what are we going to do to like spice that up? I have some ideas. First of all, our motto for this, if I, hmm, I think I lost it, is probably going to appear on screen, which I didn't intend, but let me go ahead and pull it up if I can. Uh... This one, oh, it didn't. Yeah, our motto is going to be Vestigia Nullam, sorry, Vestigia Nulla Retrorsum, which is we do not retreat. So my idea for this is that we won't retreat from any fight and none of our ships will ever retreat from the battle. We will go down swinging, uh, n no ships in the British, in the Royal Navy for the next 30 or so years under Admiral Tortuga's tenure are going to be allowed to even pull back from combat. So that'll be kind of interesting. We'll see probably some ships sunk that otherwise would have been you know, able to survive. This will have the added benefit of actually getting us uh, <laughs> some more cycling of ships. Last time I think the list made it to 130 or so. So we will be doing once again Admiral Tortuga. Now, I wanted to mention this, I got sidetracked, but Fisher, Churchill, two huge figures just in general in the world like history landscape but certainly for naval um, and certainly for the British history you'd put these up with um, 
Nelson, right? I would at least. Nelson and then uh, Fisher are probably the two most historic naval figures, I think, in British history. So we have his, uh, this quote that I actually just mentioned. Let me see if I can say it one more time. Vestigia nulla retorsum. That is actually a quote I took from the memories of, uh, so um, Fisher, Jackie Fisher wrote some, what, not memoirs, but were called a book of memories. I don't, you can look up to it, you can look into it yourself if you'd like, but that's all I'm going to say about it. So uh, for this fleet, it's going to be a huge mess. We'll be playing very large. We are not going to use historical resources. And that is because I want other nations to have more resources to use against us. We will be doing always the manual build the legacy fleet. And I think we'll just leave everything else the same. I don't want to lower the research rate. It's kind of more fun to get better research towards the end of the game. And um, we might end this one before like my previous um, my attempt as Japan. I don't think we'll go quite so long. In my opinion, that series dragged on a little bit at the end, despite the fun we had going to war with the United States. So, all right, so here we are. We're doing our normal legacy build. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm coming over a cold still. I'm <clears throat> trying to minimize the amount of distracting noises I put on camera. Let's get this down here as well. All right, so our first ship is going to be a battleship. That's the obvious thing. We'll start off with the, oh, wow, what are, what are they doing here? Interesting. Well, we can make a run of this. So let's get, now, we do start with 13-inch guns, but they're quality negative two. They're basically just terrible. I would actually would prefer to start with just 12-inch guns. So we'll do that. Maybe... Since we'll be dealing with, dealing with big ships, maybe this is the first time I experiment with making 8-inch guns for the secondaries. I normally don't do this, but I might make this the first ship ever to have tertiary, my first pre-dreadnought battleship, I should say, to, be, to have tertiary guns. I don't normally do this at all, but it could be a fun experiment, and basically you can think of Great Britain as a, a, a great time to experiment. We're gonna make the speed 18. We don't really care about speed too much. We might as well jump this up to the max. We're actually gonna have a small problem satisfying all our naval requirements all over the place. So that's something to consider that we can't just, even though we have the biggest budget, we can't throw our budget around everywhere. We're gonna need as many ships back in home waters to fight Germany. I'm sure that's gonna happen at some point. So what do we wanna do? I think I want a really heavy belt. I want nice belt extended. I'm gonna go with three instead of my usual two. We'll go with 2.5 and 2 on the deck. This is going to be too heavy, isn't it? And turrets I want. Yeah, it's just impossible to do everything we want to do here, isn't it? Yes. So let's go down to 2 and then 1. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Reduce the speed. That doesn't really help much. Well, if I take this down... Okay, well, it was a, a pipe dream for a small amount of time, but it looks like it's already not to be. We want it, we definitely prefer more heavy gun armament, and if I can, I'd like to get 16. I can because we'll take this down to 2. Okay, now we're cooking with gas. 10, 3, 2.5, 2. That's going to make these somewhat relevant in the late game, but you know what? I think I'm just going to do 2 and 2 because that saves us 400 tons. <laughs> Sorry, again. Uh, maybe we can get... Ooh, wow. I'm starting to like this ship. 11, can we get 10.5, even 11? Ooh, yeah. Okay, that's, oh, so close. Oh my gosh, I like this. I like this a lot. Eight six inch guns per side. We'll keep the emergency torpedoes for the reasons I've mentioned a million times before in my series. I think this is it. I think this is the first ship we're going to make. Um, let's see. Now, I have my list. Now, we're going to be doing ship naming differently in this series. For the first time ever, I'm going to experiment with using a Google form. It should put uh, the names all into the list for me. So that'll be included probably in a pin in the comments and also in the video description. But 
I do have a Patreon now, and I have not besides even just the Patreon, I have a lot of people who I've added to my supporters group, and they get first pick of the litter. To that, we have okay. Um, I'm gonna name this the Forester class battleship. And that'll be for reasons which will come become apparent in a moment. And I guess there's nothing else we can... I mean, we do have a little bit of weight remaining, but that's probably good for fire control stuff. So yeah, let's just leave it. In fact, we might as well just add rounds per gun if we're going to... You know, no reason to leave it blank. Okay, good. So this is fantastic. This will be our first ship, the Forester class. We'll go to build it. And the very first ship we want is the Horatio. Well, I mean, I guess we can do... The Forester class herself, and Horatio Hornblower. Okay, there's our first battleship out after the Forester. So, what you, if you want to be um, in the game, if you want to be a ship in the game, just go ahead and uh, fill out the Google form. You can probably even do it while this video is rambling on and on. Um, important to know is that I am still, as always, enforcing a pretty strict um, naming restriction. <laughs> I don't take like the stupid names if it's like Uncle Big Butt or you know something stupid like that. If it's even in a different language, it's f only fine if it's something that the British fleet could conceivably have as a ship. So if it's like something really long and silly, like my mother Murray married a whatever, any of those things are just not appropriate. We're gonna try to keep this thing so that if somebody jumps in on episode 16 for some reason, and they look down the list of names, my ideal is that they can't even tell that I'm not using historical names. That's the ideal. Excuse me, I have to clear my throat first. <coughs> okay, sorry. Let's keep going then. So I pr I'm only going to build two of those for now, and we're going to design our next ship, which will be heavy cruisers. Well, no, this is armored cruiser for the time being. We probably won't build any heavy cruisers after the debacle of, what was it? I can't remember. It wasn't the Takeda. That was the battle cruiser. But we built a heavy cruiser in the last playthrough as Japan, and it did not work out well. So this armored cruiser, just its only mission is complete see superiority in the places which are not home waters. So this is what we're going to be sending out and about, and it has to be capable, absolutely has to be capable, but we'll throw whatever displacement is necessary to make this capable of sinking any other armored cruiser and outrunning any other battleship. So if we can, I'd like to get it up to 22. We're not going to sacrifice engine priority for that. Let's get this to 5. Let's get that to 2.5, 2, we'll, uh, we'll probably have to sacrifice the deck extended. Conning tower to 6. Note that we do are going to have turret flash fires, but I'm not going to air too much against that by cranking up the turret um, armor too much. It's just going to be something which will be a frustration which we deal with. <laughs> It'll be amusing for you guys and probably not as much for me. So I don't think we can do 10 inch. Oh, we can. Okay. Maybe it's... Oh, and that, actually, this is strange. We have quality zero 10-inch guns. This is, yeah, definitely something we want to do then, is get the 10-inch guns on here. So let's just bump up. Wow. You know what? I'm surprised we can get this for 12,000. Um, do we want to add any more torpedoes or just one per? I think I'd rather add secondary guns more than anything okay so what are we missing right now nothing actually this is a good design oh yes we are missing something we need to increase the number of guns so that's going to be a problem <clears throat> yep so we'll take this back down to even seven guns per side i kind of like everything else here we'll drop this down to 5.5 and maybe just bump this up even more this is going to be a very very expensive ship and I'll go one more because I want to get a little bit more ammunition on it. Eh, 150 is fine. But we need a little bit of space for the extra fire controls when they eventually come. So that'll be, I think, sufficient for our armored cruiser. 
Okay, so let me go over to the list of supporters and see what we have for anybody. Nope, we have the... Uh, <laughs> kind of cool, a lot of people are choosing birds for their names. I, th I guess that's something the British do, right? Albion, isn't it that a bird? Or am I thinking of albatross? <laughs> so we'll leave this as the Niobe class, but the f we'll get the Niobe and let's get another one though, which is going to be the Albion. Yes, as I mentioned. Okay, good. Yeah. Now we want to get a light cruiser. Now what we... we experimented last time with a light cruiser that was a raiding light cruiser and we saw that in the end it's much better just to build a light cruiser which um, can defend itself as its as its own entity and then also just does raiding so we'll be a little bit more careful about that this time I don't think I'll be making the same mistake of getting a, a pure dedicated small especially because of our mantra of never retreating we definitely need a light cruiser that can stand to fight so I'm going to do something like this. That's always my preference, are these kind of numbers. Now we're currently going with 5-inch guns. Let's make that 6. Forward. 1, 2. 1, 2. I think we'll do this instead. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, um, 5, and 6. There we go. So we have a six-sided broadside. It looks like we're dealing with tertiaries or secondaries, but we're going to take those off. Move this up. Okay, with plenty, 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 plenty. So let's just get the ammo up. Central range finder. A little bit of space left over for fire control. I think that's nice. And... Hmm. Yeah, I think this is going to be it. So we might lose a few of these to being scuttled or whatnot. The good thing about playing Great Britain is they have ports all over the world. So normally you won't have ships scuttled if they're raiding. Normally they'll just um, return to a friendly port since you have friendly port almost anywhere. I don't really like the Kurokau. I really don't like it. But you know what? I like I dislike it so much that I'm going to suggest a different name. Yeah, that's fine with me. So we'll have this, unfortunately, this <laughs> Kurokau design. Let me just delete that immediately. Okay, goodbye. And the Comus, so we'll take the Comus and then we'll get one more. And this is going to be the Black Adder. Now, um, I am going to leave an option in the notes. I will try to, to monitor what captain names you're choosing. It's gonna be very difficult for me to remember which ship has which captain, but uh, I know that this will be, for example, Captain Thomasloff. And for the Albion we had Captain Zephion, and for the Forester, we had Captain Finnish Jaeger, whatever uh, captain name he's going to go by, maybe Captain Jaeger. Anyway, so that, um, you can feel free to include the captain name with the, the, the ship name if you prefer. Although, like I said, I'll try to use that only if I'm responding to your comments, or if you're putting that in your comments as we'll, we role play through the series, then I'll respond with your captain's name. But... Uh, I probably won't remember in the game itself. All right, so now we go to destroyers. Now destroyers are always that iffy little thing in the very beginning of the game. So I probably won't be making a lot of these. Although, good heavens. Okay, that does have centerline crowding, so that's not what we want. I was going to say, if we can get away with four torpedoes, I mean a three port torpedo broadside, that's already not bad. I think I'll keep... 3-inch guns, yeah. We're going to take off cramped accommodation. That's one way to really ruin your day. We'll do speed. I think that's fine. Um, our max displacement, I'm sure, is 500 for destroyers right now. Uh, Darewent, that's uh, it's not a name I'm... I recognize Darewent as a class name. So let's do Eden instead. Get this up. Yeah. Let's clear the torpedo mounts and then start, kind of start over. I think we'll end up doing something like one. There's some way you can do it though, like one, two. Uh, in fact, let's do this. 
Okay, does this give us the complaint? Yeah. There's a, some way where you can actually get it not to complain. Let's remove the W and add the V. No, nope, still going to complain. I, there's some magic to it. There, I, I don't. I'm not fully aware of what it takes to get this to not complain. So in order to avoid that, we're just going to end up eliminating the Q, and we have a nice balanced configuration still. If this is my normal two torpedo configuration, so what we we don't have enough space, but otherwise the other thing I would do is just add a torpedo on each side again, so we'd still have a three-sided broadside, but. Two torpedoes is probably what you'd expect from your destroyers in the beginning of the game. I was even considering just getting rid of the aft gun and making more torpedoes, but I don't think we have the... Yeah, we certainly don't have the space to do anything more. If I add a P, does that still boggle it? Yeah. Oh well. Okay, so we'll leave it as is. Maybe we'll get an extra knot out of it. Not likely. Unless we make this short range, which we could do. Can we get two knots out of it? No. But 28 for short range, I think that's fine. We'll just plan on spamming a lot of these and keep them in the the C regions where they're gonna be needed. So if that's everything, I, I kind of feel like that I might be making a mess of this design, but since it's a early game destroyer design, I'm not gonna be using them much anyway. We'll go ahead and leave it as is. Okay, so we'll get two of these as well. And those are our basic designs. So we've already done, that's not exactly what we want for our pure legacy fleet. There's a lot of other ships we're gonna add. Obviously we have a huge amount of funds left over. I don't even know, what can we take with us? 24 million, so my goodness, we have so many ships we need to build. All right, well this is gonna be very easy to settle if we just get a bunch of Forester class. I think the Forester was an American name, <laughs> now that I think about it. That might have been too many. Okay. Every normal name of <laughs> battleship in, in like that we could imagine is now being built. That's probably too many, but that's okay. We'll get a few more of our heavy cruisers as well. Wow, we can get four more. This is insane. This is a lot of ships. And now we'll just start getting light cruisers until we hit the 24 million mark which okay that's 21 million so what if I do eight and then get a few destroyers no I think I'd rather even cut it down by a little bit and just build more light cruisers um, I don't think we need that many destroyers oh a minesweeper I'm being so naive we need our our trusty minesweeper as always this will be the workhorse from day one till the end of our series as they always are so clear, minesweeper, auto-generate, the dependence. <laughs> Not the independence, but the dependence. <laughs> it depends on other, no, I don't like that name. But if that, if you're saying the only other names, you're, okay, fine, it's the dependence. No, we're not going, we're, this is gonna be the same thing it always is. 200 tons, 17 speed, because for some reason it doesn't take any other, any extra, um, tonnage to get up to 17, 18 is the first time it starts costing more weight. And by whatever silly logic has allows me to do this, I, it still allows me to get an inch of belt and an inch on the turrets, which makes this actually capable of taking down early game destroyers without a problem. We'll get whatever kind of, what am I missing here? Oh yeah, get rid of those tertiaries, or secondaries. And then we just have a lot of ammunition to play with, but Let's just keep it right here. 180, I'm sure that's more than enough. These won't, well, they'll definitely be sunk long before they have a chance to fire off all 180 rounds, I'm sure. And that's it. Okay, good. So the dependents, <laughs> it's very strange why they, I guess if people are declaring their independence from the United Kingdom, probably the United Kingdom enjoys the idea of dependence, maybe. Otherwise, it kind of strikes me as a silly name for a ship, but that's okay. All right, so we have 42 million left. That's probably more than, let's see, how much do these cost? 21. Yeah, that would take us down to 21 nicely. I think I'll still do that because 
what else? I'm, I mean, the other option is to build like a, a lot of destroyers, and that's not what we want to do. So let's go ahead and get a uh, Canada Comus. Okay, fine. It might be Comus, actually, now that I think about it. Good, so we're down to um, 20 million, basically 21 million in funds, plenty of monthly balance as well. We do need to move some of these ships into different areas because our foreign tonnage requirements are going to be, I mean, you could just see here already blaring at me. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have nine sea zones that we have to occupy with a significant size force. And that is, as you can see, the reason why this is difficult. This is quite difficult to play as Great Britain only because of the, the management. We basically have, I mean, do we have to even populate South Pacific? No, that's the one that they let us get away with besides the South American coast. So we have to put, keep ships on every single sea zone with the only exception um, that we own some colonies in South Pacific, but we don't need ships there. Um, which I think in the last episode we lost, or they lost, Great Britain lost Fiji to a rev uh, revolt. And we want to try to keep the majority of our ships in the, the Northern Europe. Wow, I can't speak tonight. Oh well, it doesn't matter. So let's see here. The Mediterranean needs a bunch. Ah oh, man, this is just a pain in the butt already. Well, how many do we have here? I think it's fair to keep a few battleships in Southeast Asia because we have a lot of colonies there. Let's grab three. Okay. Let's also grab, let's say three and move those over to the Mediterranean. And that leaves us only eight left on our home waters. Well, okay, that's just gonna have to be enough then. All right, so we satisfied the Mediterranean and Southeast Asia. We have, oh God. So let's go and try to put our armored cruisers. I wanna leave one armored cruiser at least in home waters. So let's put one in the Indian Ocean, one in the Caribbean, oh my God. And then there's too many different places. So definitely one in the Caribbean because this is a, a big, place for a lot of colonies of us. One in the North American East Coast. One, two, we only have one more. And I guess that one has to go to the Indian Ocean. Okay, well, we settled it. I'll probably get, oh no, we have plenty. Okay, good, so we have more than enough. Move one to North, we'll just go down the list here, Indian Ocean. Move one, two, uh, North American East Coast. Move to the Caribbean. Move to the west coast. All right, now how are we doing? West Africa, wow, Indian Ocean needs more. Northeast Asia needs one. And we'll get a few more ships, I think, into the Northeast, uh, North American East Coast. Unless we go to war with the United States right away, which I don't think is gonna be our first target at least. I, I predict Germany is going to be a, a big problem for us. I mean, that's definitely one of the places I want to go to war with because they're a lot of fun to fight. Yeah, but the, France was another great opportunity for us to take a lot of colonies. And the, liber the like liberating thing as when you're playing as Great Britain is it doesn't matter where you acquire colonies, you're guaranteed to already have some ships or some colonies already there. So you're not going to be creating more work for yourself because you already start at pretty much the maximum workload possible. So let's see, how many ships do we have left over? We only have one in Northern Europe and I, I wouldn't mind leaving, to, honest, honestly, I wouldn't mind leaving two in Northern Europe. Or, uh, hmm. Tenant requirements are a problem though. What if we, okay, let's do this. Let's see if our light cruisers can make make up the difference in other places. And then we'll be building a lot of light cruisers and those will be the ones who end up populating North Europe, Northern Europe itself. So let's get three over to support our battleships in Southeast Asia. That only makes sense to me. Let's get three over, uh, maybe only two. No, no, we need three in the Mediterranean. Okay. And we don't have enough ships, I think, to do what we want to do. Let's move a couple down to West Africa. 
Let's see how we're doing now. Northeast Asia needs two, probably. My goodness, this is just impossible. <laughs> we'll probably have to disperse some ships after we finish building some more. So you think you're doing so good as Great Britain, but really, <laughs> you're just struggling. That can't be right. I don't think this updated, because West Africa is certainly satisfied now. Yeah, and Northern, the Eastern, what do we, how many ships do we have there? Oh, we only have one. Okay, so that one's probably correct when it says that we don't have enough ships. Well, let's get, just get one more to move over. And that's good. So I think that's it. That's all we want to do for this episode, perhaps. Um... Let's see. No. We can actually go and f complete our legacy fleet in the next turn. Uh, is there anything else I want to do, though? Da, 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 da. We need to go one more. Okay. So this is our initial fleet. That's good. We set them up. Ah. Okay, some ship generation stuff. I'm surprised that they still have these errors. Uh, this late in the versions. 1.34. We're playing on the latest, I think. 1.34 beta or something like that okay now we continue building our initial ships which means that basically we can put down a lot of light cruisers so this is 12 million okay and we're still positive so let's just pretty much pump out how many more 4 million okay we also need a lot of minesweepers, but I guess those can come second. Is it worth it? No, I think that, well, we do get them at half price, so it's probably still a good idea to build a few more. Okay, now we'll do this, but we'll put a few on pause. Ugh. I guess these two are the <laughs> immediate candidates. Maybe one of our tens. Halt the construction there. Good. Perfect. Very good. All right. So that is probably our initial setup. How's our... Okay, we are still short. What the hell? I thought I had people in West Africa. No. I actually... I really did completely neglect West Africa. <laughs> oh, I put them into the Mediterranean. It looks like that was my mistake. Okay, let's get these to West Africa instead. Okay, now Mediterranean to... To Northeast Asia. Okay, good. Now we're good. So the Indian Ocean. What? I thought I put some ships in there. Did I make another mistake? Southeast Asia, Mediterranean, West Africa, Northeast Asia. Yeah. Somehow I made another mistake. I thought I put something into Indian Ocean, but you know what we'll do instead? We'll just put two armored cruisers in the Indian Ocean for now. And I'll, I'll come back and I'll address that as soon as I have a few more light cruisers marching around. All right, so that's it. We are ready to start the game. I guess we can also do our research stuff before we begin the game. Going to war with Italy, is that who we want to go to war with? I don't think so. But we're going to get our research up. This is going to cost more money as well. Yeah, so let's start doing this the way we want. We have an advantage in ship design. I'm going to keep that on high. Keep this on high. Low for these two. ASW, low. Submarines, low. Torpedo technology. We'll leave it on medium. Uh, this one's probably a good one to put on high, but I'm going to leave it on medium so that we can get turrets and fire control hull, armor, all these things I've, I'm, okay, I usually do machinery on medium because it is something you can come back later and refit, whereas you can't do that with armor or hull construction, but I think we're okay like this. So that's what I'm going to choose, max this out. Again, 10-inch guns, 8-inch guns, we have everything quality 0 from 8-inch and lower, that's great. 10-inch guns being quality 0 means that we have, I think, really good armored cruisers out right now. And I probably should build a few more of those as soon as we get the money. Um, putting everybody down low, and that's it. So, January 1900, we're ready to begin the game, which I will do in the next episode. So again, if you want to be in the game, if you want one of these ships to be named after you, just include, just 
put in the survey and they'll be dumped onto the list in the order that they're filed. Um, if you're interested in kind of like fast tracking, you can, I guess I should actually put a link to my Patreon somewhere, <laughs> otherwise it just sits. In the description, there will be a link to the Discord. So I do have a Discord server up now if you are interested in popping in and saying hello there. There's quite a few people on even right now. So you can come in and talk with all of us if you'd like. Um, I might even put up like a Rule the Waves channel in the Discord to discuss, depending on how popular talking about Rule the Waves becomes on the Discord, because I know that the Aurora 4X channel is constantly busy. So um, what else? Well, I guess the last thing I want to say is that same old thing I always say on the first video of any series. Since this is the first episode, if you wouldn't mind just pressing that like button, even if it's not something you normally do, that is just going to help generate uh, better search results for this video on YouTube. And of course, I will never ask about that for the rest of the series. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you back for episode two. And until then, take care and remember, vestigia nulla retrorsum. We do not retreat.